There's no better time than right now to get started with GitHub Copilot. It has a ton of AI productivity packed right into it. And there's a free tier now. So this video is going to get you set up with everything you need to get started with Copilot and make sure you subscribe to the Visual Studio YouTube channel because we're going to have plenty more videos covering everything that we cover in this one, but more in depth. Also, be sure to check out the links that we have for you in the description. All right, let's get started. First, we need to sign in with our GitHub account and enable our free tier of GitHub Copilot. We can do this with just a couple of clicks inside of Visual Studio. Click the sign up for Copilot free button. Sign in with our GitHub account. Click the sign in button. Now we can select the continue next to the account we want to use and then authorize GitHub. This will redirect us to Visual Studio. Once back in Visual Studio, we're ready to use GitHub Copilot chat and GitHub Copilot. So let's get started. Let's say you want to get up to speed on a new project or feature that your colleague has implemented. GitHub Copilot Chat can help us do just that. Now, when you ask GitHub Copilot Chat questions, by default, it's going to include the active document for context. However, since I want to know more about the entire code base, I can use the at symbol and then select workspace because we want to ask about the entire workspace. So let me complete the question by asking, what does this code base do? At the top, we can see that Copilot has generated a summary. This code base appears to be part of a cloud-based dictionary application that uses Azure functions in Azure Cosmos DB, and it lists out the Azure functions, repositories, models, and tests. One of my favorite functionalities in GitHub Copilot chat is this right here. At the bottom, it'll provide an additional question that you can simply click on. And this is related to that original question that you asked. It almost nudges you to dive just a little deeper and gain a little deeper understanding. So I'm gonna go ahead and click that. In this case, it auto-populates that question, which is what are the key dependencies used in this code base? And it goes ahead and lists the answer there. GitHub Copilot Chat and the at workspace functionality are great tools for you to get up to speed with all things about your code base, features, and project overall. Let's now use GitHub Copilot to write some code. I've got a couple of Azure functions here. All of them are using HTTP triggers. I've got some implementing get calls, post, and put, but I don't have any delete. So let's work on that functionality here. Let's go to a new line here. First up, we need to write the function name. And in this case, Copilot is making an educated guess based off the file that I'm actively working on. This function name, delete definition, I can accept by hitting tab because that is the name that I want to use. Let's hit enter so we can continue writing the rest of the functionality. That's awesome. It looks like based off the name, it's been able to suggest the rest of the functionality for this delete definition Azure Functions code. I'm gonna hit tab to accept this as well. And let's continue working through this. Now I do see an error here. So let me take a moment to remind everyone that yes, Copilot is awesome at suggesting code. However, it's still on us, the developers, to ensure quality and performance in everything we ship, which is a good thing, right? Okay, so let's hover over this error to get a little bit more information about what's going on. All right, it looks like the type cannot be inferred. I'm assuming that's based off the fact that we're using null here. So what I can do is hover over once more, select fix with Copilot, and let's see what Copilot suggests. Okay, it looks like it's got a suggestion here for us. However, I'm gonna give it additional information as to how I would wanna resolve this. All right, let's send that to Copilot. And the suggestion that it provides with the additional information I gave it looks like what I want. So I'm going to hit accept. And there we go. And this is just a small example of how you can leverage GitHub Copilot to iterate back and forth and continue building awesome code. When we're developing, we could be making changes to a single file or multiple files, and it could become difficult to remember everything that we've done. 
Let's head over to Git Changes, click on this pencil icon, and we can have Copilot draft a commit message based off our changes. We'll hit save here and let Copilot do its thing. This summary of my changes actually works quite well for me. So I can go ahead and click the accept button. You can fully customize all of this to your liking. Let's say you want Copilot to use emojis in your commit messages. You can set that up. All of this also works for pull requests. Be sure to check out the docs in the description for more info. So far, we've used GitHub Copilot to make changes to a single file. But what if we need to add functionality that will require changes across multiple files? Well, this is exactly what GitHub Copilot edits can help us do. Inside of GitHub Copilot chat, on the top right, we can select the middle icon, which will allow us to create a new edit session. And here we see a couple of examples of functionality that GitHub Copilot edit can help us with. We have add a new feature to my application, refactor code, or fix a bug. And these are sort of like templates. So let's select that first one. Here it's saying, help me add a new feature to, and let's say we want to add a get definitions by author of functionality here. So let's continue using this template. Help me add a new feature to, I know we're going to need uh, to implement some changes inside of dictionary functions. And we also need to implement some changes into the repository file. If you use the pound symbol that I will allow you to reference the file and include it in the context. So help me add a new feature to dictionary functions and definitions repository that gets definitions by author. Let's hit enter and let GitHub Copilot do its thing. We can see here that Copilot edits has suggested we implement a couple of changes in a couple of files. We can see them listed here. So let's kick things off by selecting that first file. See the changes that Copilot has suggested. We'll scroll to the change. And once we arrive there, we can hit tab to accept, alt delete to reject, and F8 to go to the next change. I can additionally click on the right icon to accept changes in that specific file, or I can accept all the changes from this top icon. Before I make any changes or accept anything, I can further take a look at the code and look at the other changes that Copilot has suggested as well. We'll select the second file, scroll down and look at the changes here. And from here we can hit accept all. That is just a brief example of how we can make edits and implementations across multiple files with the help of Copilot edits. We know developers like using different models for different tasks. So for Copilot for free, inside of your github.com settings on the left side, you're gonna select Copilot and under Copilot policies, there's a feature that you can enable. So you can leverage Claude 3.5 Sonnet in Copilot. Just make sure you set that to enable. And now we're going to be able to use this inside of Visual Studio GitHub Copilot. Back inside of Visual Studio, inside of GitHub Copilot chat, at the bottom, we now have the option to select Claude as the model we want to use. GPT 4.0 and Claude are the options for GitHub Copilot free. And when you upgrade, you'll get access to more models. So keep that in mind. Now, we also get access to selecting Claude when we use Copilot inline in the editor. So let's say I select this line of code here and then I invoke Copilot with alt forward slash. You see, I have access to switching the model here. All right, time to show you one of my favorite things with Copilot. Uh, these are called slash commands. So we have, for example, doc, which adds documentation uh, for uh, the code that we've selected. We also have tests. We have optimize. Let's use the optimize one. So analyze and improve running time of the selected code. And we will hit enter here. So we'll see what Copilot and Sonnet come up for us to improve this line of code here. Here's the optimized version of the selected code. Reduces complexity, improves readability, performance impact. It's minimal but is more CPU friendly. So from here, I can hit 
preview to just look at the changes and then I can hit accept. I highly recommend you check out all of these slash commands as they all have their different functionalities and meant to help you with different tasks with your code. And that's it for this video, but there is so much more to GitHub Copilot. So make sure you subscribe so you can catch all the deep dives that we do as soon as they come out. Be sure to check out all the resources that we have for you in the description. And of course, any comments, any feedback that you have, you know where to leave them. As always, happy coding, and I'll see you in the next video.